Bamani's history is rich with many different music styles, themes, events, and games, and has been the genre's longest running producer for almost 30 years. Bamani have often been seen as the leader in creating new and innovative rhythm game gameplay from the very start. But success like that does not come without some major failures, and it was bound that some games weren't gonna make it that long. Hell, a majority of the games that I've covered on Dead Rhythm Games are from Bamani. But sometimes you have games that don't even make it past the starting line, doomed to obscurity forever. Reflectbeat and Otoe Roja may share their common fate, but today we're talking about a game that doesn't even have a single piece of video footage, Rizminence. Rizminence, or its rebranded name Saikyo DJ Anikurage, was a Pumani game that had exactly two location tests in 2018, with gameplay similar to Chunism plus a crossfader. Some posters of it document some gameplay basics, but it's a little hard to tell without any gameplay, because not a single video of this game exists anywhere online. The location test and game itself are actually considered lost media, as pretty much all we have on the game is the location test posters. The game was quietly discontinued and never spoken about again, making it more dead than Otoiraha's still active website. So, Rizminance joins the list of dead rhythm games. Thanks for watching, and thanks so much to my supporters on Patreon. What? The, the video's over. I, I talked about the game already. <laughs> Fine, okay, okay. We can talk about something else. Rhythm games today have become a lot more cinematic and tonally consistent than they used to be. Gone are the days of the arcade rhythm game that has a single holistic theme at best. These days we have rhythm games with whole storylines, consistent art direction, cutscenes, intentional tone, and more. There's a much bigger emphasis on making everything in your game tonally consistent. However, for one day a year, a lot of rhythm game developers say, fuck it, we ball, and release content specific to only April Fool's Day. Over the last decade, we've seen a lot of developers follow this trend to make something silly and fun for their players to interact with, whether that's a silly social media promotion, some one-day exclusive content, or some really silly charts that don't have to follow the rules of the game for that one day. There's all sorts of wild content out there, but I want to mainly put a spotlight today on some of the April Fool's Day exclusive songs and charts, because they have a habit of going absolutely wild. So sit back and enjoy some of the silliest content rhythm games have to offer. So of course, if we're going to talk about April Fool's Day content in rhythm games, we have to see who did it first. As far as I can tell, the first ever April Fool's Day Rhythm Game event was held for Mai Mai back in 2014. Shortly before the 1st of April, Sega uploaded a video to Nico Nico of Happy, the developer who wears the dog mascot costume, singing a cover of the song Dog Days. On the 1st of April, the audio for that song was replaced with the audio of the cover for that day only as an April Fool's gag. Years later, in 2019, this audio was revived for an Utage chart, which is basically Mai Mai's version of World's End. Something else interesting to note is that the Silent Blue Wiki mentions that in 2013 there was a Mai Mai April Fool's Day event that was exclusive to Sega internal development cabs of a song called Sega Saturn Startup Sound Not H Remix. I'm unsure how knowledge of this even exists other than maybe data mining, but I would love to know if there's footage of this out there anywhere. Mai Mai would continue to do different April Fool's Day gags each year, but after this, a trend would start to slowly arise within arcade rhythm games of other games having April Fool's Day events. The next notable rise of arcade April Fool's Day events would come in 2016 with two more games adding April Fool's Day events to their lineups. First up is Sound Voltex, marking the first time that Konami dabbled in doing an April Fool's Day event for one of their games, and what I would also say is one of the more notable early April Fool's Day charts. Released on April 1st, 2016 was Great Teacher Grace's Ultimate Devastate Gravity Tutorial. 
The song itself is an extended version of Sound Vault Texas tutorial song and is set up similarly to the tutorial with Grace giving the user instructions. However, the tutorial quickly becomes disastrously difficult to play as Grace throws all the Gravity Morse chart mechanics at the user. Extreme angle changes make the chart visually brutal to play while Grace presumably watches on laughing at the user as they struggle through the tutorial. This was the first April Fool's chart that I personally was aware of, and as far as I know, a lot of people probably assume this was the first one. This chart is playable every year on April Fool's Day, along with the two other April Fool's Day charts that have been made for Sound Voltex. The first being Professor Maxima's Full Bloom Heavenly Course, featuring the Listen Go mechanic from Tutorial and Eyes Screen Blackout mechanic, which are combined to make an audio listening minigame. There's also Exceed Course, but a little different, which uses basically all charting gimmicks available, as well as notes that move down the lanes at different speeds. The other game to start introducing April Fool's Day content in 2016 was Chunathem. Chunathem's first April Fool's Day chart was a cover of Help Me Aaron from Iridori Midori. To try to give some context for this one, Help Me Aaron is a Toho cover song by Cool and Create that is, uh, quite old now, and was something of a meme song in the Toho fandom. Iridori Midori is a music act that exists in the Chunathem universe and is a tie-in series to Chunathem itself. As such, they often release crossover and cover material for jokes or April Fool's Day content. They've done lots of silly content with Iridori Midori over the years, like releasing episodes of the in-universe audio drama with 3D audio, or other covers like this cover of Conflict. Sega's trio of Geki Chuma games actually had a really interesting cross-game April Fool's Day event in 2019, which had players solving puzzles to unlock a song that was available in each game. The result was a song titled Angry Hammer Mitsuyoshi Takeshi Shu Partial Mystery. The song itself was a cover of the tune of them original Ikazuchi, with all parts of the song covered via vocals. <laughs> This is a super interesting and fun idea to me, and the Twitter thread is pretty interesting to look at now that all of the puzzle solutions are on it. 
While Sega in particular has continued to carry the torch on April Fool's Day gimmicks from the arcade game side, the mobile and indie rhythm game spaces started to pick up the torch and make their own April Fool's Day gimmicks as well. Arkea is one that has definitely gone all out for April Fool's Day, making some really crazy gimmick charts to complement an in-house remix that the team has done of one of the game's songs. There's stuff like Red and Blue and Green, which adds a third laser color, Singularity VVVIP, which uses dramatic camera shifts and notes outside the playfield, a remix of Camellia's 1F1 featuring sections where you have to rotate your entire device, or my personal favorite, Overdead, featuring separated scrolling speeds, reversing gameplay, and even a clock. All of these charts are available each year on April 1st, so definitely hop in and check them out. We've had some wild stuff in other games as well. Figros featured a remix of It's Snowing Merry Christmas that was unlocked by turning the air conditioning down. Vivid Stasis featured a whimsical button that brought you to a Taro Nuke mod chart of 0-0, basically allowing you to experience a not-ITG mod chart in a different game. Rotano featured a ridiculous overchart of Rush E, which is a kind of wild collab. I actually had no idea this was in the game until I was making this video. The chart even pays homage to the original Sheet Music Boss video in some ways. Shout out to EGHD for this footage of him absolutely fighting for his life on this insane chart. There are some other ones, like Voez, which featured this comedically difficult chart of Game Game. And Lomnota featured this absolute shitpost sounding song with no title that halfway through does this. There have been all sorts of April Fool's events throughout the years. Chuna Them debuted an ad for a fake new version called Chuna The Moon. Project Sekai featured an event with covers from new groups made for that day only. A Dance of Fire and Ice had a button that reverses the direction of the orbs. And Muse Dash had a super difficult tutorial replace the normal tutorial on April Fool's Day. Especially over the last five years or so, rhythm games have really used April Fool's Day as a chance to really just do some wild, silly stuff and surprise the fans. There are even more games here that I haven't mentioned that do April Fool's content. So on this glorious holiday of April 1st, boot up your favorite game and see what kind of wacky surprises the developers have in store for you. 
You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching, and thanks so much to my supporters on Patreon. Check out my Twitter, Twitch, and community Discord. Links are in the description below. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.